Hello. Welcome to the section about getting started with collaborative learning. First of all, why did you choose collaborative learning for your course? Perhaps because two heads are better than one. Indeed, educational researchers have found out that collaborative learning improves results because students teach each other by addressing misunderstandings and by clarifying misconceptions. When planning your collaborative learning course, your target is to improve engagement. This means to recruit interest, to sustain effort and persistence, and to improve self-regulation. It is also important to create resourceful and knowledgeable materials. Therefore, you will have to provide multiple means of representation of the materials and to be strategic and goal-directed in choosing them. To provide multiple means of action and expression in collaborative learning activities, you generally have to go through a three-steps process. First, you have to introduce your task instruct your students and invite them to discuss or debate it. Discussion and debate are at the base of collaborative learning. Secondly, you will have to organize the groups. Remember to give enough time to let students become engaged with the task and be ready to answer to any question. Third, you have to think about outcomes and evaluation methods, which must be set in advance and explained at the beginning of your course. There are some preliminary questions you have to answer when planning a course in a collaborative environment. So, for instance, who are the typical students enrolling in your course? You have to figure out how many students you will have, what kind of prior knowledge and experience they have, what kind of motivation they have and what kind of access to technology they need. Then, what kind of knowledge or skills do you want your students to acquire? And how do you want them to achieve these outcomes? So reflect on what kind of activities and assessments would be useful for each outcome. Choose if they have to watch to listen to read, to write or to discuss and reflect upon things. Set these activities in advance, and last but not least, reflect on what kind of resources students will need. Designing group assignments requires also to reflect upon four fundamental things. 1. You have to organize the group on the base of their addressed outcomes. 2. You have to consider students' workflow, group dynamics, how to support their work and what kind of materials you have to provide. 3. You have to present the activities, the needed amount of time and how and when you will check the group. 4. Consider which level of learning you are targeting, bearing in mind group's taxonomy of learning styles. You can check the link below to have advice in forming the working groups. Forming groups is fundamental in collaborative learning, remembering that spontaneous grouping is not a good practice. Allowing students to form their own groups will likely result in uneven groupings and sometimes these groups will not achieve the goals you have set for them. If possible, arrange groups by skills and or backgrounds. So, for example, you could make a first assessment or ask students to rate their comfortability level on a number of skills. After assessing or self-assessing the students try to arrange groups that include experts in different areas. Another possibility is to provide a preliminary assessment and then create groups by blending students' abilities. What are the advantages of working in a collaborative environment? The advantages are above all for the students because they become active learners and students working in small groups often learn more and demonstrate better knowledge retention. What is the advantage for the teacher? Meaningful class discussion will not only teach students how to express concepts and ideas in their own words, develop reasoning skills, examining diverse perspectives and purposely responding to others, but will also motivate the teacher to collaborate and to have new ideas. In the end, remember that much of the group work and of the assessment work can be done collaboratively and online. This sensibly lessens the difficulty of coordinating the groups. Remember that collaborative learning is a very effective methodology. Here are some references to this topic. If possible, have a look to the website of the Cornell University at this link.